The Netherlands is not going to sit idly by, just waiting for sea levels to rise. Expecting as much as a one and a half meter increase in water levels, they now plan to fight water with water. Now on BBC World News, Earth Report goes with the flow. The Netherlands is a country claimed from water. Now it seems the water wants it back. Rising sea levels and overflowing rivers are making this low-lying nation increasingly vulnerable to serious floods. When there is no land, there is no country, there is no Netherlands. It's not a matter of saying, let's just abandon the country. We, we cannot do that. Will the Dutch be able to keep the water at bay? Or must they now contemplate the previously unthinkable, allowing the water in? We shouldn't any longer fight against the water, but, but use it and, and give way to it. Just let it come. We can't hold it back anyway. And if it comes, we'll try to make the best of it. Fons Bergmans has a farm near Maastricht on the Dutch-Belgian border. It's been in his family for generations. The farm is on an island in the River Maas, or Meuse, one of the country's five major rivers. In 1993, heavy rainfall caused the river to flood. The results were devastating. Just before Christmas, the mass flooded when the Christmas tree was up. The house was full of fast-running water swirling about. In one day, the water reached up to here, about 60 centimetres. That's how high the water came to in the house. The flood wreaked havoc on the whole Limburg region, destroying homes and livelihoods and cutting off communities for over a week. And sometimes we saw just outside a hovercraft passing by. The Christmas tree was floating. We had a terrible time. We spent eight days like that. It's the kind of experience you couldn't imagine, and we hope it will never happen again. Without an extensive flood defence, the Dutch can't exist. Two-thirds of the population lives below sea level. For hundreds of years, they relied solely on defensive walls or dikes to defend themselves from flooding. Raised embankments crisscross the country, and windmills, so identifiable with the Dutch landscape, were not just for making flour, but for pumping water from the land. Then, in 1953, the North Sea flood caused destruction across Northern Europe, especially in the Netherlands. Close to 2,000 people died. It was obvious that sea walls and dikes were not enough. Over the next three decades, the Dutch constructed huge barriers to protect their coastal cities. But 50 years later, the possible impacts of climate change have put the country's flood defences back under the spotlight. Scientist Louise Fresco has advised the Dutch government on preparing for the future. There are two main threats to the Netherlands. One is um, the rising sea level. And the other threat is that as a result of major discharge through the rivers due to high uh, rainfall in the future, we will have more water coming into the country. And the combination of rising sea level 
and water from the rivers, of course, poses a very uh, clear and present uh, threat. Sea levels are rising faster than predicted, as much as 1.3 meters by 2100. Rising sea levels, combined with greater river flows, poses the risk of flooding. That risk has now doubled. In a large-scale flood, millions would have to be evacuated to higher ground. If it happened tomorrow, the Netherlands just couldn't cope. Our system is not up to standard to deal with very large quantities of water, especially if they come suddenly. The Dutch government's response is a national water plan, an overhaul of the country's defences costing billions of euros. The initiative is designed also to raise public awareness of the dangers of climate change. Dutch people are not afraid of water. We, we know we, we live below sea level. We do that for centuries. Sometimes uh, it, is, uh, it would be better if the Dutch people were a little bit more afraid of the water because now there, there maybe is the attitude, of course, we will be able to keep uh, uh, the danger outside. And now with this climate change, it really is important to take measures and to really do things. Attention. You should leave the building via the indicated emergency exits. Do not use the elevators. Last year, the government staged a five-day mock evacuation to test the country's readiness for severe flooding. The results were telling. Had this been a real flood event, 4,000 people would have died. I don't want to wait for a disaster. I don't want to wait for a flood before we take measures. I want to prevent disaster because you can understand with so many people living below sea level, when really a flood occurs, it, it will be horrible. It is really something we have to prevent. The Netherlands is in a constant battle against its receding coastline. The tide creeps ever closer to seaside towns and villages. To strengthen beaches and dunes and protect communities, millions of cubic tons of sand are dredged from the seabed and redistributed near or on the shore. The waves will do the rest. But an even more radical project is underway for the Netherlands rivers. We used to, to have these dikes to keep the water in, in place, but now we learn we have to make uh, a place is where the water can flow to in case of more water coming through the rivers. So uh, that is an enormous project uh, through the whole country for over 40 places where we have to uh, make room for the river, as we call it. The Dutch are recreating their landscape to allow rivers room to flood, but in controlled spaces. Large channels are dug out alongside rivers to create reservoirs holding overflow during seasons of heavy rainfall. A thousand hectares of land by the River Maas will be flood zones, including land given up by farmer Fons Bergmans. The work near the Bergmans farm is led by engineer Michel Harbraken. He's working closely with Fons. In fact, his office is on the farm. <coughs> with a variety of landowners and special interests to negotiate with, it's taken over a decade to get the project started. Now, things are moving fast. The land has already been partially flooded to take pressure off the river. We started two months ago. This used to be agricultural land. They had maize, carrots, potatoes. You can see over there the last buds of the maize. The moment the farmer took his last harvest off the land, the very next day we brought in the machines and started digging up the soil.
Fonz Bergmans has given up 40 hectares of land to the Riverworks, land farmed by his family since 1750. The farm produced a mix of crops and Fonz introduced a dairy herd. Now, all that has gone. This used to be a cow shed. Yes, cows were my life. My wife always said, Marika, Choika, and that one. They come first, and then it's me. That's what my wife used to say. <laughs> when the mouse project started, where can you go? I lost 40 hectares of land. Where could I go with my animals? There was nowhere else. So two years ago I got rid of the last cow. 